Good morning, and, uh, and, and thank you for uh, hanging, hanging around for, for Friday. Uh, so happy Friday. Uh, so I, I really appreciate the, 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 the topic or the title that was uh, given to me or assigned to me by the committee. It, it's really interesting that in the early days of, of Condor Week, I would uh, micromanage every five minutes and which talk will come before and which talk will be come after. And for this week, I just waited for, for Janet to send me email and saying, that's what you do, da, 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 and the rest was. Uh... So I was given an opportunity to dust off my favorite slide. So uh, I went back in my opening remarks to, uh, what was it, 96, uh, 1986. Now I go to 2000 years back to, and those of you who know me long enough know that it's always my answer when somebody comes say, oh, I have this great idea. I said, nothing new under the sun. <laughs> okay, so, and, and I would encourage you all to follow this principle whenever t somebody tells you, here's a great new thing that we haven't thought about it, you know, da, 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 and say, is it really new? So, there's nothing new under the sun because in the 1960s, there were mainframes. And the, main, the way you access the mainframe was through a deck of cards. And it was all batch. You came, you left your box of cards at the card reader. You were not allowed to do your own reading. There was an operator. And then you went to the waiting room and waited for the printout to come out sometime. And I can tell you the most frustrating things about that was that you were spotted the printer, which you didn't have access to it, that your printout came out, but you had to wait for the next one to finish to push your printout out so they can cut it out because they will not waste the paper to jump you forward to cut out your printout. And that was batch processing until they came up with this amazing uh, machine, the IBM 2741, that Derek who just walked in, who is in charge of Discover IT, I'm sure that he's running several of them in the building. That and then we, we had APL, and suddenly we had people involved in it and not just the card readers. And IBM came up with the multi programming with variable number of tasks as a main achievement and ran into quite a bit of problem to get this operating system going in the in the 60s because actually mvt before that they had the fixed number of tasks the mft because they said okay at the beginning we'll have a fixed number of it will be multi-programming but it will be mft rather than and if you think about it, where we are today in our wonderful environment, that's the way we operate. You come, you get on one of these big machines, a bunch of processors, and they decide how many tasks are running at any given time, and they don't run concurrently, that's you that is using it the back end is a little bit uh, a little bit uh, different and then they start thinking about the notion that the job like unit of work that they can they can manage but 
you see that when we are walking in today with uh, Jupyter notebooks or all the other things into our world, we are basically reliving the, the 60s. So don't feel special. And what we need to do is we need to learn from, and I can tell you, I spend many, many hours in front of the screen. When I did my master and PhD in the 70s, that was my interface to, to the IBM machine that, uh, that we had at the time at the, at the Weizmann Institute. And that just increased the pressure on the mainframes to say, okay, it is not just submitting your task or placing your task via a terminal and I have to deal with, but uh, suddenly I have somebody sitting at the screen and, and doing things, editing, uh, moving things around, and then eventually executing. And remember, this is all before Unix was in existence. I, when I came here in 83 on a personal note and I was exposed to the wonderful world of Unix for the first time, and I ran something and I said, I got the message back, back broken pipe. I went to the bathroom to see what the hell is going on. Do we, need, do we need to fix the pipes? I just got a notice on my screen that the pipe is broken. Okay, I had no, no clue what is. Um, by the way, luckily, my next door neighbor after a year was Bart Miller that was involved in writing the, the BSD software. And anytime I had the question about how the, 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 the shell scripts are, are working. I said, wait a minute, let me look at the code. And he went in and, and, and saved me. Okay, so, so then we had terminal. So here is a part of the IBM a manual about the, the system 360, introducing the basic terminology that we need to follow today. And they said, okay, we have foreground jobs and we have background jobs. And this movement of interactive comes and says, yes, you cannot have only background jobs, you need to have back foreground jobs. Yeah. And the way that you address it is you're doing time sharing. Wow. What a concept. And in order to do time sharing, you have to introduce the notion of uh, slices. And you have to introduce the concept of I will swap you out and I will swap you back in. Because if I give you a slice and you time share, so the concept that uh, the system 360 brought in uh, at the early days was we have to do time sharing. We have to do time sharing is based on slicers and we have to swap in and swap out. Okay. So. The. The main difference today, I would say, between and, and what we had in the 60s is that today the illusion of generation uh, X, Z, Y, I don't know, wherever generation we are, that these are beliefs that resources are unbounded. I want something, it's there. In the old days, it was always resources are bounded. We don't live in an unbounded. And if resources are bounded, we have to do time sharing. Namely, I cannot get now what I want for as long as I want it. 
the cloud, the commercial cloud people are trying to give you this illusion, but then they come later into your checkbook and make you pay for the for the illusion. So if resources are bounded and we have to do time sharing, we have a few questions to answer. We have a need for policies. And uh, the first one is how quickly can I allocate capacity for your interactive request? You came in, you said, I want something. And going back to the IBM days, uh, it is a foreground job, not a background job. I said, okay, when can I get my time slide? And if I have free capacity, then I can give it to you. But then I have to keep around free capacity to give it right away to you. Or I have to swap out somebody in order to give you capacity. I mean, this is not rocket science, right? Uh, any Airbnb will tell you the same, the same principle. Or I can just kill. If I cannot swap you out, I, I have to swap you out to the graveyard. And, or I can come and say, no, go home. You want something? I don't have it, go. So these are all decisions that we have to make in order to do, to support interactive. And once I gave you the capacity, the question is for how long? For a millisecond, 10 minutes, an hour, a day, a week, you know, we, we have, some uh, customer of CHTC that come in and get a, a capacity, start a notebook, and are sitting there for a week or two. And once in a while, come back and run their stuff because we allocate capacity, okay? But that, that is, uh, and again, do we swap you out at the end of the time slice? Do we send you to the graveyard? And do we limit how many of them you can have? So these are all decisions that we have to, to make. And I would argue the beauty about the HD condo system is that that's where we started. Okay, this is the paper that uh, Mike Lisko and I published in, in uh, uh, in 92, and you know, at the time we had 250 workstations. And the, the thing was, okay, I have an interactive user, which was the owner of the workstation, foreground, and I came in and ran the background. And when the user came back and moved the mouse, I had to give the foreground and now you can understand why at the beginning, checkpointing, swap out, was at the core of what we were doing. Because we preferred not to send people to the graveyard. So the mechanism, the thinking, cycle scavenging is about priority to facilitate time sharing. So there is really nothing new, except for this not working, uh, under the sun. And I would argue we have the mechanism. And I invite each and every one of you to come up with the policies. How soon, when somebody shows up, do I give them capacity? And once I give them capacity, how long do they get the capacity? And when the time slice is over, what can I do with them? Can I swap them out or can I kill them? And the, the, these are the decisions that we make, assuming that our capacity is bounded. And Fortunately and un or unfortunately, K 
capacity is bounded. So I'm eagerly waiting for policy. Thank <laughs> you.